working on lessons to learn from Jehu and his assignment. I think this is part four. We can take on this. When I have heard that Nebaoth, or Nebaoth was dead, he got up to go down to the vineyard of Nabal, the Jezreelite, to take possession of it. Then the word of the Lord, I wanted to mark every verse, came to Elijah the Tishbite, a Tishbite, get up and go to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who is in Samaria. You will find him in Nabal's vineyard, where he has gone to take possession of it. Keep going. Tell him, this is what the Lord says. Have you murdered and also taken possession? Then tell him, this is what the Lord says. In the place where the dogs lick Nabal's blood, the dogs will also lick your blood. Ahab said to Elijah, so you have caught me, my enemy. He replied, I have caught you because you devoted yourself to do what is evil in the Lord's sight. Keep going. This is what the Lord says. I am about to bring disaster on you and we sweep away your descendants. What that word? And we sweep away your descendants. May it not be a portion. I will eliminate all of Ahab's males, both slaves and free in Israel. Keep going. I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha, son of Ahijah, because you have provoked my anger and caused Israel to sin. The Lord also speaks of Jezebel. The dogs will eat Jezebel in the plot of land at Jezreel. Who, he who belongs to Ahab and dies, and dies in the city, the dogs will eat. And he who dies in the feed, the boss of the sky we eat. Still, there was no one like Ahab who devoted himself to do what was evil in the Lord's sight. Because his wife, Jezebel, incited him. Or Jim said, keep going, darling. Keep, keep doing it. He committed the most detestable acts by going after idols as the Amorite had, whom the Lord had dispossessed before the Israelites. May God bless his word. In Jesus' name. Are we in verse 30? Can we look at 30? Can we look at 30, 37? Are we in that same, that same verse 30 to 7? Let me see if I have anything. 30 to 7. Verse 30 to 7. Yeah, verse 30 of the same verse, of the same chapter. Let me see if I'm a halabashi. Of the same chapter. He says, no, no, okay, no one, maybe I'm, okay, that's okay, that's okay. Now, let me begin with this, if I, Lord, all right. Labondo zikili baraba seka labando zika labayando, raba labo zikili bando, okay, I got it. Let me begin with this. Anytime abnormal things happen in people's lives or dangerous trends begin to take place you know, in communities, city, or nation, the first thing you must do is to ask yourself such as the ask, is there a cause or reason for that before proceeding to blame God or to question God? Anytime there is no negative occurrence in a city, in a nation, or in a family, or in a one's life, the first thing a wise man should ask should be, Lord, is there a cause? Why is this happening? Before you say there is no God. If you do not ask intelligence through spiritual question, your next move would be the chorus of atheistic movement, which says there is no God. Because your mind has been confronted with unprepared occurrences. But if you look at the book of Psalm chapter 14, verse 1, it says the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Psalm 14, verse 1. 
The fool says in his heart, who? The fool, there is no God. God does not exist. They are corrupt. That's why they say what they say. Their actions are revoking. There is no one who does good. So anytime you start saying there is no God because of one negative occurrence in your city or in your life, the reason is because your heart is shifting, your heart is drifting, you are becoming corrupt in your heart, or you are not thinking right. Hello, somebody. Now my question is, why did God decree the massacre of entire generation or household of Ahab, family, by Jehu? Are there a cause? Is God unfair? Is God insensitive? Or could God be a bloodthirsty God? And if not, then why? A lot of us sometimes when things happen, many years ago when I met my wife, first Kings, second King chapter 9, second King chapter 9, I'm going to be looking at 21 to 26. When I met my wife, we had a father I used to say like Westfield Mall. In fact, it's even bigger than Westfield Mall. That is where a lot of people in that city, like in Auckland, it is called my one market. Um, it's like where who, who is who have market. They have business they are doing. It caught fire. So my wife came to see me. And um, after, I, I went to drop her off to her house. When we got there, one lady says, you are there and your father's shop is burning. Of course, she was a little bit jealous. Oh, you're quiet on me. She was jealous that the young lady that used to be her friend now is hanging out with a handsome young man. <laughs> so, he said, you are there and your father's house, your father's market is burning. Then we realized that the market was burning. And we quickly rushed down there. People crowded all over the place. Some of them wanting to rescue staff. And then I said, so I wanted to go with my wife. She refused that I shouldn't go with her, that I should let her go. I thought, she said, no, I should let her go. I don't know why she wanted. Maybe she didn't want to see people to see that she was with a young man. <laughs> so I stepped by the car and I let her go. And where I was sitting or standing, I saw a young lady shouting and she really meant it. There is no God. There is no God. If there is God, why would this happen? There is no God. And, and I tell you, she was saying it with all her might. And she meant it. Because she saw what she couldn't handle. Or because her heart was already corrupt even before that day. A fool says there is no God. So now, why did God must take us? I have family. We've been studying about this thing. I don't know why God kept me in this scripture in the last over one month now, six weeks. Why is it? It was God, a blood thirsty God. Was God, is God, I mean, a blood thirsty God. Is God a murderer? Of course not. Hello, somebody. You must understand that behind everything that happened in life, there's always a reason. And once you don't know it, you will jump on board to condemn what you do not know, to say the things you do not know, simply because you don't know what God is doing in the spirit realm. Now let's jump into this and see what the Lord says. Harness, harness, Joram shouted. Joram is the son of Ahab. Joram succeeded Ahab. And remember, that's already a curse over the house of Ahab. Hello, somebody. That's the danger. When you have a father that have done all sort of evil, and you're born in that family without knowing that a lot has happened in your family line. Some people come from a family with a faulty line. And so you are now working very hard, and everything is turning against you. And you keep wondering, why is all these things happening? Sometimes the reason is because you, we are not caught out from a true, from a very clean tree. And when that is not in your line, you tend to see that you're struggling all your life. It's not because you're not working hard. And the only way you can overcome is to chart the way of righteousness. Once you begin to chart the way of righteousness, perhaps mercy will come looking for you. 
King's Mercy Global Church. Mercy will come looking for you. But if you don't know how to you know, reconnect, disconnect yourself from a faulty life, family life, by giving your life to Jesus Christ and making him the Lord of your life, hello somebody, and confessing, you know, renouncing all that, was, that took place in that family line, you may struggle all your life. And that's why I have written a book called Breaking the Cycles in Your Bloodline. A lot of people that believe in new Christian theology, they believe that once you're saved, everything the past is gone because they claim that once a man is in Christ, he is what? A new creation. All things have gone and behold, the new has come. But I wonder, you were, before you were in Christ, you probably were poor and after the day you, you, you received Christ, you were still poor. So how come immediately you confess Christ, money did not start knocking on your door? A million does, did not stop pursuing over you. If once you are in Christ, everything becomes new. If everything becomes new, my poverty experience should also move from, I should move from being poor, being poor to being what? Rich. Everything does not truly become new. Hello, somebody. Your soul may have become new, but you've still got to cut some ties. Now, we're going to read and see what happened to Joram. But Hannah Joram, the son of her, Joram shouted, and then her nurse is shattered. And Joram, king of Israel, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, sat at each in his own chariot and met Jehu at the plot of land of Nabaoth the Jezreelite. Remember that plot was mentioned in our first scripture. That was a land that belongs to a man called what? Called who? Naboth. And Naboth, his land was stolen from him, you know, forcefully taken from him, or his children killed you know, by Jezebel, just for them to possess that land. And you know, because of that, the Lord sent a prophet, a fearless prophet, who was not looking at the king's table. We have a lot of prophets today that are looking at members' table. And that's why they don't want to say the truth. Hello, somebody. Because they are being paid by the members. So this man went and said to the king where he was, I said, because you've killed this man and you have gone to take his land. In this, in this land, your blood and that of your family will be shared. Are we making sense, God's people? I'm taking you somewhere. Please listen carefully. Let's keep, when Joram saw Jehu, he asked, do you come in peace? Some of you know the story already. Jehu answered, what peace can there be as long as there is so much prostitution and witchcraft from your mother, you know, Jezebel? Joram turned around and fled, shouting to Ahaziah, the, the king from Judah who came to meet him. It is tri trickery or treachery, Ahaziah. What is, then Jehu drew his bow, shoot you know, Joram between the shoulders. The arrow went through his heart and he slumped, he slumped down in his chariot. Keep going. When he slumped down, Jehu said to, be, to Bika. Now what that was very important for you to know why things happen. Jehu said to Bika, maybe a personal assistant, his head, pick him up and throw him on the plot of ground belonging to who? To Nabaoth, the Jezreelite. For remember, say everybody, say, say to your neighbor, remember. Oh, say neighbor, you may have forgotten. <laughs> remember, it was said. I'm looking good now. He forgot that it was prophesied years ago. Oh. He said, for remember, when, when you and I were driving side by side behind his father Ahab, and the Lord uttered this oracle against him. What was the oracle? You know, as surely as I saw the blood of Nabaoth and the blood of his sons yesterday. Amen? This is the lost word message. In other words, Nabaoth was not just killed alone. It was not only Nabaoth that was killed. They went ahead killing Nabaoth for his plot of land and, and everything that was going to inherit him so that they will have power to occupy what belongs to him. That will not be your portion. Oh, I don't know if you're following me, somebody. It's, for as uh, for, uh, for, uh, surely as I saw the blood of Nabot and the blood of his son yesterday, this is the Lord's message. So will I repay you? 
on this plot of land. And that was what Joram was key. This is the lost message. So now, according to the word of the Lord, pick him up and throw him on the plot of the land, which they stole forcefully. May that not be your portion. So, oh, oh, verse 30, verse 30 and 37. Sorry, I'm reading long. I know why I'm trying to show you something. I'm taking you somewhere. When Jehu came down to Jezreel, Jezebel heard about it. Because Je the son who, who took over from the father went on the road to see him, to meet him. He killed his son. So Jezebel heard that the son is being killed. Instead of her to be shivering or jittering. Hello, somebody. And confessing her sin. This is her statement. And that's how wicked people behave. When Jehu came to Jezreel, Jezebel heard about it. So she painted her eyes. Did you see it? Did you see it? Whenever you paint, don't have a pen lest you look like Jezebel. Oh, am I still talking to somebody? <laughs> Don't have a pen. I down her head and looked down from the window. What is this? As Jehu entered the gate, she said, Do you come in peace, Zimri? Zimri was one wicked king, so he was comparing Jehu to Zimri. Yet Jehu had the anointing of God. Some people are calling you Zimri. You are not Zimri. You are just on assignment. Do you come in peace, Zimri, killer of your master? Keep going. He looked up toward the window and said, Who is on my side? Oh, two or three eunuchs looked down at him. These were the ones serving Jezebel. And he said, Throw her down. So, threw, so they threw her down, and some of her blood splattered on the wall and on the horses, and Jehu rode over her. That was what was said. Remember, it was said. Said somebody, remember. remember. Then he went in, ate and drank, and said, Take care of his of this cursed woman and bury her. She she was alive, but she was a cursed woman. There are people that are doing business with you today. If you know what they carry, on Clinton they carry, you will not go close to them. Because once you put your money in what they are doing, it will, also, it will vanish. Why? Because they are living cause. Listen, then he went in, ate and drank, and said, take care of this cause woman. She was painting, but she was cause. So don't mind what is happening in holy word. And bury her since she, she's a king's what, daughter. Keep going. But when they went out to bury her, what is this? They did not find anything but her skull, her feet, and the palms of her hands. What happened? So they went back and told, and, uh, and told him, and he said, this fulfills the lost world. You remember what we read before in First King? The lost world that he spoke through his servant Elijah, the Tishbed, in the plot of land at Jezreel, the dust we eat Jezebel's word, flesh. Are we here? Is there a next verse? Jezebel's corpse will be like Manu on the surface, sun, on the surface of, of the feet in the plot of land, adjusting so that no one will be able to say, This is Jezebel. In other words, Jezebel was not buried. In the same way, Jezebel played with Naboth's life, God played with her own life. Oh, you're too quiet, man. I will show you one more scripture before I get, it. I get more into preaching. I know I'm taking time for 10, chapter 10. Are we okay reading the scripture? Yes. Second King chapter 10. We're going to look at 6, 8, then 10, 11, and then now we move on. 6, 8. Then Jehu wrote them a second letter because the sons of Ahab, Ahab had about 70 sons. So because he wanted the sons to be raised well, like some of us, we want our sons to be raised well. We send them to Harvard, to Yale, to Oxford, not even to Auckland University. Oh, you're not you're quiet and miss somebody. So he sent them to this, you know, to the heads of the families where they will be fully taken care of. And there were 70 of them. Now Jehu ordered those men to cut the head of every prince, every son of Ahab's family. And bring it to him. Let's read. Then Jehu wrote them a second letter saying, If you are on my side 
And if you will obey me, bring me the haze of your master's son at this time tomorrow at Jezreel. All 70 of the king's sons were being cared for by the city's prominent men. He lost somebody. He was raising his kids to take over. When the letter came to them, they took the king's sons and slaughtered all 70, put their heads in basket, and sent them to Jehu at Jezreel. Keep going. Now, when the messenger came and told him they have brought the heads of the king's sons, the king, the king said, pie them in two heaps at the entrance of the gate until morning. At this time, Jehu has become a king. Keep going. Oh, Oh, Rabbi. The next morning, when he went out and stood at the gate, he said to all the people, You are innocent. It was I who conspired against my master and killed him, but who struck down all these ones. Jehu wanted them also to be part of what he was doing. Uh, are you here, somebody? Then 10 11. No, no, then that not a word. What is this? No, then that not a word. Not a word. The Lord spoke against the house of Ahab. We fail. Not a word. For the Lord has done what he promised through his servant, Elijah. Some people who heard Elijah saying that, that they, they would say, you're a fool. That's how you always talk. We don't see it happen. But we see it now happening. So, so Jehu killed all who remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, all his great men, close friends, praised, leaving, leaving him no survivors. Are you there, verse 17? Leaving him no survivors. The king who was once in power, a lost somebody, who was you know, intimidating all men and women in his kingdom, now had no one in his lineage to represent him. All these things is vain. When Jehu came to Samaria, he struck down all who, were, who remained from the house of Ahab in Samaria until he had annihilated his house according to the word, according to, according to the word of the Lord spoken to Elijah. I just want to show you this to see that these things we see today around the world happened in the Bible. Let me say this. If you are to be a passerby, an onlooker, and you see three bodied, able young men carrying a woman like Jezebel from a window, you will be cursing them. Hello, somebody. You will be saying, what are you doing? How could you be handling a, handling a woman in such a manner? You're going to throw her down. Hello, somebody. You will be wondering, you will be nagging, you will be cursing. You will say, these guys are wicked. Sometimes some folks are doing things that seems like a wicked stuff, yet they are doing the will of. Oh, you're quiet. I'm... In the eyes of the world, <laughs> in the eyes of men, they are being cruel, but they are fulfilling an assignment. And if you are not in the spirit, if you do not know how to ask intelligent questions, you will be causing them, hauling all sorts of insult in them, calling them wicked folks, not knowing that you are coming against God who has sent them. From time to time, God raises a draconian leaders, wicked presidents or kings in certain nations. If you watch it, sometimes when those kings come to president, they tend to stay longer. No matter what the people say, no matter what the public prays, the nations of the world, they will continue to win election. And you're so mad and say, God, are you not saying all this, all this thing done by this man? Why is he still winning? Because the man has not finished his assignment over that nation. Often, when God gives a nation a draconia, you know, high-headed, you know, you know, king. I lost somebody. A king with a, or a, a president or a prime minister with, that, is, that is a, a hydra-headed kind of person. If you watch it, that nation may have rejected a good king. Oh, you're quiet on me. You're too cool for me. Let me come here. <laughs> if you watch it, they may have rejected a king or a president or a God-given leader. Hello, somebody. 
And God decided, because you have rejected a good leader, I will not give you a leader that will rule you. I will give you Saul. I will give you Saddam Hussein. I will give you Gaddafi. And I will give you Mugabe. And, and, and oh, sorry, somebody help me here. Oh. <laughs> Let, let me clear. Let me clear. I'm closer to Zimbabwe City. Oh, let me come closer. <laughs> he said, and, and I will give you Mobutu Seku Seku. Even a batch of Nigeria. <laughs> Hello, somebody. That is when God releases such leaders. Anytime a nation, a leader, rejects. Hello, somebody. A man that is sent by God, a woman that is sent by God. God tends to take, send, send them what their flesh desires. And they know flesh kiss, but the spirit giveth life. Oh. And that's one of the reasons you don't open your mouth to say things you do not understand. Because there are many things we don't understand. You may have knowledge in some areas of life. Does not mean you have no, no, no knowledge in the other area. For the fact that your own wife been cool doesn't mean another person's wife been cool. For the fact that your own husband been cool doesn't mean that your own another person's you know, no husband been cool. So you may see the lady react badly. I don't know if I'm making sense. <laughs> react badly. And you're wondering, I can't handle my man in this manner. Or, or, the, or the man is saying, no, I can't handle my woman in this manner. Why is this man messing up? Sometimes you don't know that they are where they are coming from. They are coming from where you've never been to. So all you've got to do is to be silent, just shut your mouth and watch. Sometimes ask God, why is this things happening? Is there no cause? Because God in this, is in the midst of history. God, this world is not an empty world. Somebody's ruling it. So if God is omnipresent, you know, it's, it's, it's here right now. Omniscient, all knowing, and omnipotent. Okay? It means he has the power. If he wants to stop any, any earthquake or tsunami, he can do it. But why does God allow that happen? You want to tell me that God of all the earth does not know that COVID is coming? You have about 30,000 people in quarantine right now. You never believe that such a thing will be happening in the next 20 years. By January, we didn't see it coming. We heard the news, but we didn't know it was going to be like this. Now, we are being restricted. I don't like to stay one place. I've been caged. We've been restricted, limited, hello somebody, by what is called, it began with the name Corona. Then it graduated to COVID. Now, we don't hear much of Corona, we're always saying COVID-19. But let it end in 2019. So all I'm saying, please don't be quick to judge. That's your neighbor. neighbor. Don't be quick to judge. Because he doesn't know what God is doing. Because God will always pay. Jehu said, God is paying the house of Ahab back. We see some, somebody like Saddam Hussein. His two sons, one is called Odeh. Is he Odeh? He was a wicked young man. He killed people just by his word. He was just like the court and everything. They would just take you and kill. Two of them died in one day. Is that not the word of God? Where was Saddam Hussein pulled out from? He killed the whole village. He lost somebody, used chemical, massacred them, you know, by his brother. Is it chemical? They call him chemical Ali. He lost somebody. But while he was doing that, the word of the Lord was hovering over his neck like a knife. And said, Saddam, in the same way you killed him, I will also wipe away your family. And when they died, they died in, in one day. Saddam was, you know, pulled out from a hole like Nebuchadnezzar, where he had nothing to shave, nothing. Once a reigning king, a reigning president, he was hauled out from the hole. That is what happens when men are wicked. Hello, somebody. 
Gaddafi, where was he hauled out from, from something like a seaweed, right? Pipe. A lot, a whole Gaddafi. You know, that was <clears throat> where he was. Do you think it's natural? It is called judgment. A lot somebody, God hauled him out from, you know, found a young boy, just hauled him out from, and shot him dead. His son died in his presence. A lot somebody, when you look at all these rulers today, look at the son of Eli's, two sons of Eli, died in one day. Those are scriptures for few. That means if you are living a wicked life, you've got to prepare for the consequences if you do not repent. Hello, somebody. Because the Bible is as real as the hair you can touch. You see, the words of God, you will always say to hear Elijah, you know, Jehu saying, this is what the Lord said. This is what the Lord said. What have the Lord said to you? Do you think it will not come to pass? What has the Lord said to KMGC? Do you think it will not, it will not come to pass? That's why I was telling you this morning, the empty chair does not define the calling of God up in the church. It has nothing to do with the calling. The, the chair that is not seated by someone does not have anything to do with the word God has said. God has told us that the name of the church will be in b ball. And so shall it be. So nothing will change the word of God. It's just a matter of time. Help me talk to you, neighbor. Say, neighbor, just a matter of time. It may not be working right now, but just a matter of time. It may not have come through now, but just a matter of time. Help me say, neighbor, it may look so hard right now, but just a matter of time. It is imperative to note that the problem of our world is as a result of frailty of man. Check yourself. Hello, somebody. A family was wiped out because of 40 lies in their family tree. If you look at the book of 2 Chronicles, 2 I mean, Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, it says, Examine yourself. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Examine yourself whether you are still in the Lord. Could you came just here? Test yourself to see if you are in the faith. I think this is good. Take, go back to that from my scripture. Okay, leave it here for examine yourself. Sit, neighbor. Examine yourself. Help me tap somebody's shoulder if you will, somebody. Just tap somebody's shoulder. If they're not friendly, move your chair. Hallelujah. <laughs> if they're not friendly, just move, move. <clears throat> you say, say, neighbor, examine yourselves. Whether you be in faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own self. Know that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. Unless you have iron heart. Use the other translation again. Sometimes you don't need me to tell you that you are walking in rebellion. And that's somebody. If you do not have a reprobate heart, what is another word for reprobate? Can anybody, some of you that speak good English? I got my own from the pit. <laughs> I'm by the roadside. Some of you got your own from University of Yale. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Hello. Another what? Rebellion. Halabashande. Test yourself to see if you are in the faith. <clears throat> Examine yourself, or do you not recognize yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless you fail the test? Hello, somebody. Am I really talking? So, many of us Christians, Christians are rebellious people. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, Lord, help me, help me, Lord. The things we do, if we were living in the days of the law, some of us, we would have been about 10% here right now. Uh, about 90% um, would have been wiped out because we don't listen. I told somebody when he gave birth to your baby, I said, call her and listen because you don't listen. <laughs> Hello, somebody. I was listening to a great woman of God 
a woman, uh, the wife of Dr. Howard, uh, Howard Mayo, God, I love that great man of simple man, a great heart. And the woman says, sometime, he said, he said, she was talking on forgiveness. She was saying that, just let it go, forgive them. He said, he said, that, he said the worst part is, well, people have been pouring in their life, blessing them, empowering them. He said, when do we leave church? They don't even tell you they're leaving. After five years of pouring so much, praying for their family, calling you at night and noon, giving free counseling, they don't even tell you that they're leaving. She said, at least they should have, you know, have courage to say you are foolish to be pouring in our life for five years that we are living. You are foolish for having done that. So they should have said that. Thank God you're not your wife sitting here, so I will not be disturbing her. Hello, <laughs> somebody. She said they should have had courage to say to you, man of God, sorry for being too foolish. You don't even know I'm too rebellious. I'm going. She said they don't have courage to tell you that. He said, but will you carry that? No, she was. I love, you know, just a simple message she preached. I think we put it in our world. So, so in, in, in our K, in KMGC WhatsApp group. Very simple, but it really blessed me. I love somebody. Sometimes you don't need a big thing to be blessed if you have a simple heart. But she said, let it go. Let love cover. Because none of them called you. Said to your neighbor, you didn't call me. So relax. Don't define me. Oh, you're too cool on this. You're too cool. You're too gentle with this. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Just don't define me because you didn't call me. Oh, hallelujah. 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 So if you are a true child of God, you will always from time to time, please listen carefully, examine yourself, taste yourself if you are still a child of God. Because sometimes when you are long in the Lord, if you've been in the Lord for 10, 20 years, you tend to think you got it all together. And you tend to think you know God. And because you think that you know God, no matter what you preach, it does not affect you anymore because you have church tongue, you have church ways, you know how to carry yourself as a Christian folk. So nothing moves you anymore. You think you've known God. It is called familiarity. Once you begin to be familiar with God, you begin to die. And that is why when they were crossing over the Jordan, you know, God told them and said, told them, Joshua, make sure that they don't come closer to the ark. Let them keep the ark distance. I don't want them to be crushed and pushing the priest that carries the ark and possibly be looking into the ark of covenant. He said, give this chance. Meaning, I don't want them to be familiar. Once you become familiar, you will no longer receive from the altar. There are people that know their pastor too much that they no longer receive from the altar. Am I talking to somebody? I used to say to somebody, be closer, but don't be disrespectful. No, don't be disrespectful. You can be closer, but don't be familiar. Am I talking to somebody? familiarity have killed a lot of people when you marry that man you used to be honorable when you marry that woman you used to be honorable but now you're no longer because you are too familiar you are in the garden without clothes am i talking to somebody many years ago we we're having a meeting in our kindred and the chairman of the meeting was talking and the wife quickly jumped up and opposed him before everybody there and the man looked at the wife and said i said lady it's like you have known me too much am i talking to somebody. Some of us have known God too much and that is why nothing is moving again. So we see a man of God go to a particular city and they see the power of God moving because these people came with a fresh heart. Many Christians today treat the body of God, body of, 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 of Christ like a trash. That is why they will walk away anytime they want to walk away. They don't consider your feeling. They don't talk to you. They don't have any kind of meeting. They don't show respect because the thing that the house of God doesn't matter. And when you begin to treat the house of God in that way, be sure that your own house will be treated in that way. And that is why God said to Ahab and said, Ahab, the same thing you did to Nabal, I'm going to do to you. 
Am I talking to somebody? Ahab massacred you know, and Jezebel, not just uh, Nabaoth, because the Bible says Nabaoth, but some scriptures say and Nabaoth blood and his children. That means he killed Nabaoth and he killed everything that will inherit Nabaoth. It will not be your portion. And so when God began to wipe away the house of Ahab, he made sure he killed Ahab, killed Jezebel, killed Joram, killed everything that will inherit him. In the same way he did to Nabaoth, the Lord repaired him back. I want him to say, Lord Jesus, please don't repair me back. Some of us today, we are suffering not because God is wicked. We are suffering because we've not repented from our past. Everything we've been going through today is because we have refused to repent. You may go to any kind of man of God to lay hands on you. It will not work until you go on your knee and say, God, I come with a broken and a contrite heart. Some of us need to really repent of our sin if we must enjoy the future. Men and women that we face the future with courage and boldness, a man that knows how to come to the altar with a broken heart, a man and woman that knows how to come to the altar with a heart of mercy, with a heart of tears, and say, Lord, I got it wrong yesterday, but I'm sorry, Lord. I blow it up yesterday, but I'm sorry, Lord. I mess up yesterday, but I'm sorry, Lord. I'm not proud of my past. I'm not proud of my rebellion. I want you to show me mercy. Mercy is a prayer God cannot reject. Mercy is what I call self-indictment. Anytime you cry for mercy, God have no choice but to show you mercy. Because when you say mercy, Lord, all you're saying, Lord, I am wrong. Am I still talk to, talking to somebody? Is there anybody that still got to the presence of God and say, God, I am wrong. I know of a young person who always blamed God. She thinks she all got it together. And I keep saying, you can't always blame God. If God is all this wrong, what about you? What have you done wrong? Until you begin to know that God is not the problem but your past. I'm actually talking to someone. God is not a problem but our past. Some of the things we are dealing with today have some root with our past. And that's why we need to come to the house of God with a broken heart at all times, asking God for mercy. Smart people don't go to church because they're too smart for God. Wise people don't go to church because they are too wise for God. Hello, somebody. Only foolish people come to the presence of God. I am happy I'm foolish to serve him. Am I talking to somebody? You cannot truly serve God if you are wise because wise folks don't serve God. But if you come to the presence of God with your foolish, the Lord will wisen you up. Come with your foolishness and see what God does with you. I want to rush this. Jeremiah 1, 11 to 12. The fulfillment of of the prophecy against Ahab, Ahab's is a testament to prove that one, when God speaks, he watches over his word to fulfill it. Jeremiah 1, 11 to 12. I read again, please. I want you to pay attention. I said the fulfillment of the prophecy against Ahab's is a testament to prove that one, when God speaks, he watches over his world to fulfill it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Prince, asking, what do you see? Jeremiah put your name there. I replied, I see a branch of an almond tree. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, for I watch over my word to accomplish it. Oh, you're too quiet on this. <laughs> I watch over my word. That means when God gives you a word, he doesn't remove his eyes. Amen. They keep directing the word. Making sure it falls in place. Making sure God knows how to direct the word like a miser. Hello, somebody. 
If Iran knows how to derail their Misa and his bolas, hello somebody, what about the God of all the earth? So the Lord said to me, you have seen currently, for I watch over my will to accomplish it. That means everything God have told you. Wow, wow, I'm just happy right now. I, I look at somebody right now that was happy for the person. <laughs> I was everything God have told you, He will bring it to pass. It doesn't matter how many years it's been there. What have God told KMGC? KMGC, rise up! Because the hand of the Lord is on you. <clears throat> So he said, when, when I speak, I guide my world. I make sure nothing tampers with the world. I make sure it comes true. God guided his world until Joram's time. Hello, somebody. And he dismantled Joram. A word that was spoken to his father long after the word the father was gone. That word came looking for the sons and dismantled the house of Ahab. Number two, when God speaks, now, now I said the fulfillment of the prophecy against Ahab is a testament to prove that number two, God's word does not only come to pass in the negative sense, but also in the positive sense too. Hello, somebody. Jeremiah 31, verse 28. Please, I want you to be smart in the spirit. Am I making progress, gosh, people? Am I making sense? Jeremiah, Jeremiah, oh, Rababa, it says, uh, just as I watch over them to uproot them, over them, it could be anybody, it could be Ahab, and to tear them down, to demolish and to destroy, we see another watch here, right? And to cause disaster, so will I be attentive to build and to plant them, says the Lord. Oh. So if the word of God destroys, you see another translation here, it means the word of God also builds. So what have you received? Have God given you a word? Are you laying hold on the word of God? And it shall come to pass that like as I have to watch over, over them to pluck them up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to flee, so will I watch over them to build and to plan, say the Lord. Amen. Then he said, that, what does that mean? It means, I am the God that kill it and the God that make it alive. In other words, if it, he knows how to kill and he knows how to build. So you need to know, you need to know what to choose. Do you want to choose life? you want to choose death? If you want to die, God is able. And let somebody, God is not always sweet like sugar, like some preachers would have you believe. He is still a God of judgment. The same God yesterday is the God today and forever. If what happened to Ahab was not real, it will not happen to Saddam. It will not happen to Gaddafi. It will not happen to Sesen It will not happen to, um, to um, Eli. Those things happen in the Bible, and we see it all over the world today. You see similar things happening. Hello, somebody. One day, Hollywood will be set on fire. Are oh, you too quiet on me? Because you love it. And then some of you love it. Hello, somebody. You love what you start from there. I said, one day, Hollywood will be set on fire. If they don't repent. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Number three, it proves that, Rabbi, the word, okay, I said number two, did I mention number two, right? Mm -hmm. Now, number three, the word, it proves that the word of the Lord does not return to him void. Let's from Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11. I will stay here a little bit. Oh, Lord, help me. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 55, 10 to 11. What does he say? He said, so as the rain cometh down and snow from heaven, as to return it not hither, thither, but water it the earth and make it bring forth and build. And board that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Watch it. He said, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, 
but it, it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereto I send it. Sometimes I've been in a situation. I mean, the last time, last year, it was last year, I was going to Brazil. I was not really feeling if I really want to go, you know. I was really struggling. And I was in the office, I started listening to one of the messages God preached, give us in this house. And immediately, a word hit me, boom. I, I was excited with the word. I said, whoa, I'm going to come back. <laughs> I was excited with the word. Sometime, I just listened to the word God have shared over this house. And the proclamation, I said, no, Kem just will not fail. Yeah. It, it comes like something that God just implanted in me. Amen. I love somebody. The word of God, once spoken, will not return to you void. Amen. Matthew 24, 35. It says, heaven and earth shall pass away, Amen. but my word shall not pass away. Did God told you you're going to get married? How are you quiet on me? <laughs> Did God told you that your man is coming? Oh, you're quiet. <laughs> Did he tell you that your woman is coming? Then wait for it. I said, wait for it. So when you look at all these things that is happening right now, you will not believe what God has said because you'll be overwhelmed with the things you see. But apart from what you have said, what your neighbor have said, what your environment have said, what your economy and your prime minister have told you, what COVID have told you, what have God told you before COVID? This year, the Lord said it is our year of visitation. Amen. That means we have been visited right, but some people have been visited wrong. It is actually the year of visitation. The world was heavily visited. And the Lord declared the world over this house even before it started happening. But in the midst of it all, God's people are living in Goshen. And that is why no one in this house will catch COVID-19. You have no reason to love somebody because you are being prayed for. The Bible says, Peter, the devil planned to kill you, but I have prayed for you. And that is why when you go to America, you just go bodily, knowing that you are covered, says the Lord. So when you know things like this, you tend to live in another realm. Say to somebody, new realm, new realm. <laughs> you tend to live in what? In another realm. Number 23 verse 19, it says, God will not lie. God is not a man that he will lie. Not the son of man that he will change his mind. So baby, when you get home today, begin to praise God for what God will do in KMGC. Because what, whenever he says it, he keeps it. Hello, somebody. So when you know what God has said, God told Ahab, am I taking your time? Are you really sure? Don't come after me right after now, right? <laughs> so when God said to Ahab, I'm going to dismantle to Elijah, the house of Ahab. It looked like a mere word. They call him foolish. A, a guy, a guy who was writing me in the internet the other day, I, I wanted to make, do broadcast. I don't know where I'm going. Lord, I still have a place I'm going. I wanted to do broadcast. He now wrote me and said, hi. I said, hi. He said, uh, that's a certain business uh, of bits come and this and that. He want me to invest. I don't normally, I normally say, if you don't repent, God will punish you. <laughs> but the Lord just said, dance along with him. I wasted all my time dancing along. He said, it's so, such a so business. I said, okay, how is the business? He said, he invested. I said, when he invested, how much did we make out of the business? He told me. I said, okay, well, how much have you invested of all? He told me. He said, in fact, somebody introduced him in, in Facebook, like he's telling me. But he himself is even a man of God like me and all those. And we keep chatting, keep chatting. And then I, I said, okay, when? How do I invest right now? <laughs> Are you still enjoying this story? He said, okay, he's going to send me all the account and how to invest. And then I, write, I wrote a long message. And I said to him, I said, I'm about to do something, and my time is precious to me. You have taken my time from me. I said, "Wow, you are not afraid to want to, you know, dupe. I don't know what is dupe, right? I don't know if you use the word here. To dupe a man of God. I said, secondly, you have wasted my time. I said, thirdly, you know that you are lying. I said, now, I said, now, what happened is, I gave you 21 days to leave this world. <laughs> 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 
if you do not repent. I have to add that one so that when you hear it, you will not think this man is wicked. <laughs> I said, I gave it 21 days to die for defrauding, for saying my name in faith, and you know I'm a man of God, and you want to defraud me. You are leaving the world in 21 days' time. I said, the only way to repent, to be safe, not to be under this cause, is to write back to me and tell me that you are lying. I said, if you don't do it, you're gone. <clears throat> Hello, somebody. Immediately he wrote me and said, you're right, sir. <laughs> Am I still talking to somebody? He said, you're right, sir. He said, somebody duped him. So he decided to teach to another person if he was foolish. <laughs> if he was foolish to have him been duped. Tell us somebody. So he wanted to test if that and work in other people. And he said, please, I've never duped fraud anyone in my life. <laughs> He was confessing. He was trying. He was trying to beg. And he called me. I said, no, "I don't have time to pick your phone." I said, "Just go and make peace with God." There are times when you speak with authority. Hello, somebody. How? Why? Why? Why did he catch? Why did? Is it that he, he started shivering, jittering? I just wrote something because the spirit of that word entered him. Hello, somebody. When God releases His word, He does not lie. Let all the earth become a liar. God will not lie. Let everyone die in community. In your community. If the Lord says you will not die, you will not die. Let everyone lose their job. If God says you will not lose yours, you will not lose yours. Oh, Lord. Time is not my friend. Many years ago, we battled for our residency. You all know the story for about 10 years. Keep spending money. I've never seen such a thing in my life. One of my biggest challenges. I've gone through a lot, but this is my biggest. It's something beyond my strength. But before we even apply, I was sleeping. The Lord opened my eyes, and I saw residence sign. I came by my, you know, where you sleep, you're, it's the small table there, or whatever you call it, in a drawer. And I saw it put there, and I heard a voice. It will take time. I thought it's going to be like three years. Hello, somebody. It will take time, one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, six years, seven years, eight years, nine years, ten years, possibly even up to eleven. We're paying lawyer every day. It will take time. I thank God for all the intercessors I have here who prayed for me. In fact, one of our brother here fasted for me for one year. He told me he wasn't going to eat until he see a miracle. But he, fa he, he fasted and waited and waited. It didn't happen. He started eating again. <laughs> I went to Australia. One man told me when one of my, my landlord was sick, he said he loved coffee, Filipino man. Please hear me. He said, I love coffee. He said, but because of this lady, I love her so much, I cut off my coffee. I said, Lord, it's my, so coffee is my sacrifice <laughs> to make sure that she got healed. <laughs> and she actually got healed. Though the enemy is hitting back again. Hello, somebody. Everybody was, you know, you can do something for the Lord. You can sacrifice one thing for the Lord. Hello, somebody. So when God speaks to you, do you believe it? I'm about to close, please. I know. I know. Uh, you, do you believe it? Or, or, or do you keep doubting yourself because of what your environment says? God told me, it will. Another time I was in the dream, and uh, I went to immigration. And they gave me my passport. And they said, but the visa is not there. I was in an angry with the immigration. I said, why? Why? The man said, if you don't want to wait, take your passport. <laughs> I'm telling you. He said, if you don't want to wait, take your passport. And the man said, I have, we have not given the visa, but it will take time. The Lord kept reminding me, but it was beyond my thought. But also God was building my passion. But did it come to pass? He came to pass. <clears throat> that means if God said, I'm going to give you a wife. I'm going to give you a husband. I'm going to make you a millionaire. I'm going to raise your family. <clears throat> I will empower you. I will wash away shame from you. I will give you a house. You will no longer borrow. You may think that it's just a word. But he said, when I say it, I watch you for it. Amen. You have a wife who doesn't go to church, a husband who doesn't go to church, a child that is rebellion, a child that is struggling. What do you see? Hello, somebody. We are thinking we're going to buy a church and we are seeing our members, all of them. Some of them have no. One woman told me, you know, the husband said she could not come because COVID and all this. I said, look, 
I say, it is something years old person is in the church, coming to church. What about it? And where people, their own situation is different. But for me, I don't know why. But I'm not looking at, I'm already, I'm, there's a project in my heart to buy a building. To buy a building. In the next maybe one month or so, or three months, we may have even offer, have up to 100,000. And I'm believing God for something now. If God give me that, it's coming to the house of God. I don't care the number. I know that when the building is there, you see the church, it will go places. So please, I beg you, don't look at the number right now. When my daughter walk into my house, Lord, why, why is this young man still talking? <laughs> when my, my daughter walk in this morning, Zoe, and as soon as she walk away, and I quickly say, Lord, who am I to give birth to children? I say, I'm not even qualified. I say, I, say, I got this kind of child growing in my presence. Oh, some of you are not you're quiet on me. You don't change that revelation. I say, who am I to give birth to a baby? When I marry her, we were just but two. But the Lord bless us and make us six. So when you start small, the Bible says, though small, though your small may be small, your beginning may be small. Um, Job 8 7. Your beginning may be small, but your end will be greatly increased. So anything that is small is a sign that God is about to bless it. Am I talking to somebody? Do you feel small right now in your own eyes? Do you feel that nothing is happening? Do you feel that the world is against you? The Bible says, though thy beginning was small, yet thy later end should greatly increase, Audrey. Say the Lord. What is it? A quote that is happening in your life right now. When I look at myself now, I'm saying, is this me? Oh, you don't know where I'm coming from. If you know where I'm coming from, you'll be crying for me. You'll be crying, yet you'll be laughing. When I look at me right now, I say, is this me? Because God have actually blessed me. <laughs> I don't know about you. I thought you should be saying, God have blessed you. I say, God has blessed me. I say, God has blessed me. I say, God has blessed me. Oh, God said to Abraham, he said, by this time next year, I will give your wife a child. <laughs> And Sarah laughed at that. Abraham laughed at the word of God. Because you don't laugh at the word of God. Even as I'm talking right now, you just say smile. Don't laugh at it. You smile. Hello, somebody. It is going to happen. And Sarah laughed. And God said, is Sarah laughing at my word? Sarah denied. Anybody can lie. Am I still talking to somebody? But the Bible said by that time, in Genesis 21, I think 1 to 2, the Bible said, at that time, it came to pass. Am I talking to somebody? It came to pass. Genesis 21, 1 to 2, we realized that God honored his word by this time next year. When God gives you a word, he numbers the days of the fulfillment of that word. It may be long in your own eyes, but in the eyes of God, it's not long at all. God is still doing something in the realm of the spirit. The question this morning, what have the Lord said to you? What have the Lord said about your children? What is the word of the Lord to you? Many years ago when we were battling, and when we started the church, we were struggling. And this older woman, she's dead now. She keeps telling me, but when you came to New Zealand, what word did you come with? What is the word of the Lord? Anytime I complain, she said to me, what word did you come with? What was the scripture God gave to you? Am I talking to somebody? It looked like it's not running now. But what was the word that God gave to you? I've got to forget at what is confronting, conflicting with my life. I should be looking at the word of God. The Bible says, for Sarah can see, verse 1, verse 1. I'm going to conclude with this. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he spoken as he has spoken may the Lord do unto you as he has spoken may the Lord do unto you as he has spoken in the name of Jesus the Bible says and the Lord visited Sarah 
who is Sarah this morning, who is Sarah in this church, and the Lord visited Sarah. Help me say, and the Lord visited Prince, and the Lord visited Laddie, and the Lord visited Kenneth. I don't know where you are. The Bible says, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, as he has said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. May the Lord do unto you according to his word according to his word may the lord do unto you according to his word may the lord do unto you according to his word nothing will terminate the word of god in your life verse 2 nothing will terminate the prophecies of of god over your life no demon no enemy no power no force the bible says for sarah conceive somebody's about to conceive and bear abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which god has spoken am i talking to somebody your set time is coming help me talk to somebody and say your set time is coming and it is now and the Sarah give birth to a son even in their old age I don't know what your situation may be old age represents deadness it represents dead end it doesn't matter if you are 80 the word of the Lord will come to pass in your life somebody shout word of the Lord Coming to pass now. Word of the Lord coming to pass now. I am conceiving. Say it, I am conceiving at the set time, at the right time, and the time is now. God arise. And show compassion on Zion for her set time has come. Psalm 1 or 2, verse 13. God and rise and show compassion on Zion for her set time have come. And she conceived a song. A song speaks of a multiplication seed. There are seeds that multiply. It doesn't matter how many years you've been delayed. When God gives you that seed, it will begin to procreate. My mother-in-law gave birth to only one daughter. I'm asking only somebody. But when we got home, she carried two gays and two boys to the church. And she said, this is my best Christmas ever. She tried everything to give birth to another baby. The devil kept fighting her. But when we got home, she told my mom, my wife said, anytime we go to church, I saw all that grandmama carrying their children to the children's room and going home. And I feel, when will I carry my own children? And this time when we got home, I saw her carrying her two sons and two daughters going to the children's room and coming out after the service was over and the Lord fulfill her dream if the Lord fulfill her dream the Lord will fulfill your own dream am I talking to somebody she gave birth one seed but one seed procreated you will procreate I say you will procreate every word of hell over your life is terminated every wicked word over your life is terminated Every hell pursuing you is terminated. Amen. You are blessed to be stressed. I say you are blessed to be stressed. You are beyond cause. You are beyond destruction. When you live here today, the devil will be forever afraid of you. Because the word of God is implanted in your soul. Implanted in your spirit. Implanted in your future. Implanted in your pain. The devil dare not steal it from you. Every hell against you, I cause them under the prophetic anointing. In the name of Jesus. 
turn into prayer. The word of God is like two, it's like a double-edged sword. Once it's released, it never comes back to you the same. It solves problems. It helps you. It makes the way. Some of you here, God is bringing you into a particular way that will change your life. God is bringing you into a way that will change your life. Amen. He's a way maker. Hallelujah. He will make your own way. Amen. I say he will make your own way. And in, in this house this morning, a man and woman with crazy anointing that will forever change the destiny of the world. Yes, in this house this morning, a woman with anointing and indisputable, indomitable fire in your bowl. Even the temporary conflict you are having today, have they not still the seed of the word from you Amen. because you are gunning for greatness yes, and no head they are take you out. Yes, no head they are touch you. Amen. No head they, they are lay hands on you. Amen. Any wicked voice coming against you is dead. Amen. Even before those words are released. Yes, Any wicked voice coming against you, I say dead. Amen. Anyone the vouch and you will not live to make an impact. I revow in the spirit Amen. realm that you have taken your place and their place. Amen. We move them out of the way. Somebody told me yesterday, said one woman told her stepmom, some people in the family, say you will die slowly or, or you will die faster. And it wasn't long. The woman woke up in the morning and saw eggs. Some of you know eggs in front of her door. Some of you don't understand this dimension. And after that day, she had pain. They rushed her to the hospital. All of a sudden, she was gone. After she encountered the egg. That is demonic stuff in the realm of the spirit. And many people don't go to church. They don't believe in this kind of crazy decrease. They think it's just natural. And no one, they are still stagnant. Every year, they are still in one place. Marriage not working, children not working, job not working, not making an impact from job to job, from hand to mouth, because they don't believe in the supernatural. Turn it to prayer for one minute, for one, two minutes. We're gonna close The word, the prayer been prayed through the world. I may not pray individually right now. I may not pray individually. Somebody thank God and say you receive his word. Ask God to keep you holy. As God to keep you holy. As God to keep you holy. As God to implant his word in your heart. Lord, implant your word in my heart. Implant your word in my future. If the Lord spoke against I have, can it come to pass? What about the positive thing God said about you? It will come to pass. It doesn't matter how many years it takes. Every word, every word, every word, every promises God have made you and your children will come to pass. Can I say we come to pass? It will come to pass. Every word. God told me it will take time. It will take time. I didn't know it's going to be over 10 years. It will take time. But at the end of the day, God restored me. And not only he restored me, I began to see some sudden move in my life in this season. I see God doing something in my life that is beyond what was given to me. In the same year, in the same time, God does not only put label, but he's given resources. Please turn it to pray a few minutes, few minutes. Just thank him. Thank him if you can. If you don't have hope, I want your hope to increase today. Hope is contagious. Hope sees tomorrow. Hope sees the next day. You must be hopeful. By the time you live here today, you must be rejoicing in your heart. You must know that God is about to do it. It doesn't matter what hell is doing right now. 
Yes, God said it before hell said it. Heaven said it before hell said it. Heaven said it before heaven, hell said it. Hell is pursuing you, but did you remember that heaven first spoke to you? Everything you believe in God for, receive it, says the Lord. Everything you believe in God for, everything that is opposing you, I decree, let him oppose you no more. Let season be, this season become your season. Let doors be open, become a voice. I command your bones, I command your body, I command your joint, I command every part of your body to receive life now. Renew energy, renew bone, renew energy, renew bone, renew energy, renew bone. Go, go with that song, go with it. something in his life visit him bring your word to pass let something happen for this young man in the name of Jesus Christ come, come and get him sing that song Leave. Mama, move, move that leg by foot. She, re she relieved. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give him all the praise. Thank you, Mama. Come. your life. I will say of the goodness of God. Jesus. Let's sing it one more time. I will say of the goodness of God. Declare it. Declare prophetically, for, prophetically, hallelujah. Your goodness is running out. It's 
Just one minute. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that your the Lord will go before you. He will open doors that you didn't even expect to be opened. And he will give you the strength to overcome every attack of the enemy that will try to come against you. But know this, my daughter, I am sending you. You are going for a purpose that will touch hearts, touch lives, make a difference in the lives of others, for I am using you in a way you never expected. And I will cause you to overcome every attack of the enemy. You will be an encouragement. You will be a strength. You will be a purpose in the lives of others. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We want to quickly share the grace. Is anybody blessed today? Amen. Are we able to, are we able to say Jesus? Jesus? Say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. We, thank we thank you for your presence. And we return all the glory to you in Jesus' name. Who was blessed in Bible study last week? Yes. So blessed. Amen. Now that guest speaker still speaking to this week on, on please join please join us don't miss this week amen somebody it's gonna be awesome